Today we're going to talk about the first relationship you can have with the Holy Spirit that Jesus talked about. This is all from the Bible, and then I'm going to share with you some of my experiences so that you don't shrink back. Breaks my heart sometimes when people go, well, don't talk to my Holy Spirit. I know some people, they're kind of weird. They're kind of out there in left field with, with the Holy Spirit. And so they throw the baby out with the bathwater. And you know who suffers? Their spouse. Because when I'm blessed with my walk with the Holy Spirit, my wife is, is blessed. Your children, you held out on your children, your grandchildren, your grandchildren miss out because you see one weird person in the church and he says, I got the Holy Ghost. You say, I don't want any of it. How sad. You just cursed your whole family because you judged the Holy Spirit based on someone else's actions. Don't do that. I would be a failure if I didn't teach you who the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is the best man for the bridegroom, Jesus Christ, getting the bride ready. He is down here. He's getting the church ready for the man of the Lamb. You need to know who the best man is. Very important that you know this. So, let's get into the text. Why don't you stand up? We're going to read what Jesus told his disciples 24 hours before he was crucified. He said, I got one very important thing I need to tell you before I get crucified. And a lot of it had to do with our Holy Spirit. All right? So this is what Jesus says. Most assuredly, he's talking to his disciples. I say to you, he who believes on me, the works that I do, he will do also. Say with me, I can do the works of Christ. You know, who? because Jesus said you could. Or you can throw away your children and your grandchildren and your spouse and say, I don't want any of it. Listen, I see it. I see people. Just give me the minimum fast food McDonald's eternal life ticket so I can do the minimum to get to heaven. Don't settle minimum for the minimum. Go for all that God has for you. Amen? The works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than these will he do, because I go to my Father. Where's the Father? He's in heaven. And whatever you want, here's my name. Here's the second promise. You can do the works, and with your prayer, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Oh, by the way, if you love me, don't show up to church. If you love me, don't say hallelujah. If you love me, don't go buy a dog. If you love me, what do you do? All right. There's nothing wrong with going to church. Nothing wrong with having a dog. Nothing wrong with saying a little hallelujah. But the proof is in the pudding. He said, if you really love me, you'll do what I'm telling you to do. What is he going to tell us to do? And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. Guess what that is? The Holy Spirit. But I want to tell you today, Jesus said we can have a threefold relationship with the Holy Spirit that you need to know. Now, I'm going to tell you something that will help you, especially if you're young. The three most important things in your life that will give you a good life. Without them, you will have a lot of unnecessary sorrow. The first is the Spirit of God. The second is the Word of God. The third is the assignment of God for your life. Three most important things in your life. Not your spouse, not your kids. See, you won't come to know Jesus without, first of all, the Spirit of God. No one comes to the Father unless the Spirit draws him. Number two, you'll never get to know who God is without the Word of God. Number three, you will never be happy as long as you live until you find out your God-given created assignment, why God put you down here on earth. You with me? But it all starts with the Holy Spirit. In fact, one of the things, uh, one, of the, one of the kids, Ronnie, said, the Holy Spirit is here to guide us. Now, he has many functions and he has many names. He's a spirit of truth. He's, he's a counselor. He's a helper. He's a comforter. But we're going to talk about a new series. I'm going to just take a break from going through the uh, book of Ezekiel. And we're going to talk about, for the next few weeks, knowing the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to talk to you today about the first level 
that everyone has with the Holy Spirit, whether you take advantage of it or not. How many know that when you woke up and climbed out of bed, the Holy Spirit was right there? <laughs> you just can't escape Him. All right, now, we don't pray to the Holy Spirit, but we can talk to Him. We pray to the Father in the name of Jesus through the power of the Spirit. But that doesn't mean you can't get to know the Spirit because the voice you hear is not Jesus's. It's not the Father's. It's the Spirit. And He does nothing without the Father and Jesus approving. That's all He does is just point to them. Thank you for listening to the teaching from the Word of God. My name is Paul Height. I'm the pastor of Evangelical Christian Church located at 1325 Watertown Ave in Waterbury, Connecticut. We would love to have you join us and worship Jesus Christ this coming Sunday at 1030. Now may God bless you and may he continue to cause you to grow in the grace and the knowledge of his son, Jesus Christ.